Okay, this is uh, Mr. Hammond here, and uh, we are going to review simple machines and more specifically the mechanical advantage of simple machines. Uh, we're going to focus on the inclined plane, the lever, the wheel and axle, and the pulley. Uh, this will not deal with the mechanical advantage of the wedge or the screw. We're just going to go with the four main simple machines. So the goal is to answer questions uh, similar to this. And this problem reads, a ramp that is 2.5 meters in length is used to slide a 25-pound box onto the back of a truck that is 1.6 meters off the ground. The ramp is only 80% efficient. What is the TMA of the ramp? What is the AMA of the ramp? And what is the force needed to accomplish this? The rest of this video is going to work like this. Uh, we're going to have maybe four or five or maybe even six minutes of review and uh, if you don't know what some of those terms mean AMA, TMA or if you don't know how to calculate efficiency or use efficiency you might want to just let the video play and watch the review. If you'd rather just go right to how we would work out a practice problem like this go ahead and click on that left box where it says click here to skip the review and go right to the practice problem. If you'd rather try the practice problem on your own and go right to the answer uh, you can pause the video, work on your practice problem. Once you get the answer to those three parts, uh, then you can click on the box on the right where it says click here to skip all the way to the answer of the practice problem. So if you don't want to skip either to the problem or to the answer, uh, we're going to go ahead then and get ready for our review. So here's what we'll start with with our review of the mechanical advantage of simple machines. Uh, the first equation we have here with simple machines refers to input work and output work. We know that in a uh, simple machine that would be 100% efficient, the input, input work would be equal to the output work. Um, we're going to deal with that 100% efficient thing here in just a second, but just remember that work is force times distance. So the force times the distance on the input side would be equal to the force times the distance on the output side. Now more specifically one key concept of a simple machine is what does it do? Well a simple machine does not eliminate the amount of work you do. Actually you're going to end up doing more work most likely uh, because of the efficiency of the machine but it doesn't just do more work for you it kind of makes your work easier and it makes your work easier by multiplying your force. So if we have a force and a distance here, uh, the force on the output side is going to be much greater than the force on the input side. The machine will make your force greater. Now the trade-off is because work is force times distance, the input distance over which you're applying that force is going to be much greater uh, than the output distance over which the force is applied. So on the input side, you're going to have a small force and a large distance, and on the output side, you're going to have a large force over a small distance. So it multiplies your force. Now, these equations kind of tell the real story. Uh, most problems that you have uh, are going to be dealing with the efficiency of a machine. There are no machines that are 100% efficient. Because of friction, uh, work is lost. Uh, as machines are uh, performing their tasks. So what you have to do is you have to count for efficiency. So the efficiency of the input work, right, the efficiency times the input work is going to be equal to the output work. So if the machine is, say, 50% efficient, then you would take 50% of the input work would be equal to your output work. And to break that down further, the efficiency times the FI times the DI, the input work, is going to be equal to what you get out as the FO times the DO. So if you're going to solve some problems here and they deal with the efficiency of the machine, you got to make sure that you factor uh, that in. Um, if a problem does not list an efficiency or refer to it as all, at all, well then you're just going to go ahead and assume that it's 100% efficient, although the problem is not really describing a real situation. But if it's 100% efficient, you're just going to go WI equals WO. The next set of equations that we're going to use uh, deal with uh, the specifics 
of simple machines and their mechanical advantages. The first one on the left is TMA, that stands for Theoretical Mechanical Advantage. Some textbooks call it IDA, which is Ideal Mechanical Advantage. Um, either way, this deals with the ratio of the distances, the DI over the DO, the input distance divided by the output distance. The AMA, the actual mechanical advantage, this deals with the actual forces that you're getting out of the machine and putting into it. So it's the output force divided by the input force. A couple of reminders. In both situations, the top number is always going to be the larger of the two. Because of what we've talked about previously on that last slide, the input distance is always going to be greater than the output distance. The output force is always going to be greater than the input force. That's just how simple machines work and how the force and the distances are balanced when you use a machine. So these numbers are always going to be greater than 1. If they're not greater than 1, then you're doing something wrong. So if you have the actual and you divide it by the theoretical, you get your efficiency. So any change in these two, what you're actually getting as opposed to what you should be getting is going to be your efficiency. So those are the general equations that we're going to need to be uh, comfortable with. Now, we're going to look at the specifics of each simple machine and how to find the TMA of each of the four simple machines. Because the TMA is what we're going to calculate most times because the distances are much easier to measure than the forces. So most often the problem is going to ask you to find the TMA or you're going to start by finding the TMA and then work from there. All right, mechanical advantage of a lever. It's always DI over DO. In this case, here's how it's measured. This is a lever. Uh, this is the bar that's rotating around the fulcrum, which is that triangle there in the middle. You would put an input force on this side going down. The output force would be lifting this blue sphere up. That would be your FI and your FO. And the way that you would measure your distances is uh, simple and it's true every time. Your DI is always going to be the distance from the input force to the fulcrum. It's going to be that full distance. And then the DO is always going to be from the output force or from the load to the fulcrum. That's always going to be your DO. Now, a warning about levers is that there's different class levers. This is just showing one example. The fulcrum could move around, the load could move around, but it doesn't matter where they are, this is always true. The DI is always from the fulcrum to the input force, and the DO is always from the fulcrum to the output force, no matter what order they're placed in in your lever. A pulley. The way you find the theoretical mechanical advantage of a pulley, you can do two, one of two things. You can count the number of wheels in the pulley system, or you can count the number of strings that are going across uh, the pulley system. You don't count the string that's actually lifting or doing the input force. That's separate, but here we would have one, two, three, four. So there's no real math here. You just look at your pulley uh, or um, read what your pulley um, is like in the description of the problem, and that's your TMA. All right, a wheel and axle. You're going to compare two distances, always the bigger distance divided by the smaller distance. In this case, we would take the radius of the larger part of the system and divide it by the radius of the smaller part of the system. TMA would be R of the larger portion of the system divided by R of the smaller portion of the system. Now, if they don't give you radius, but they give you diameter, you can do it the same way. It's going to be the diameter of the big wheel divided by the diameter of the small wheel. Or, if they give you the circumference, the distance around the outer edge, you can do big C over little c as well. Uh, be careful that you don't always just automatically put the big number in on top and the smaller number on bottom, because sometimes they'll give you the diameter of one and the radius of the other, to kind of trick you, you got to make sure that you can do some math to get those into like terms so that you're really having two of the same things 
to put in there, whether it's a radius, a diameter, or a circumference. Last one, and uh, this is the one we're actually going to use in our practice problem. Theoretical mechanical advantage of an inclined plane. The easiest one, the length of the ramp goes on top, the height of the ramp goes on bottom. It's just a ratio of those two uh, things. All right, now we're ready to work out our practice problem. So we need to calculate the TMA, the AMA, and the input force. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the TMA. Now, as we just saw in the previous slides, the theoretical mechanical advantage of a ramp uh, is the distance in divided by the distance out. I like to always make a little drawing. And so here's my drawing here that I used on the previous slide. And for the TMA, we're going to label them. The length of the ramp is 2.5 meters, and the height of the ramp is 1.6 meters. So the theoretical mechanical advantage of the ramp would be L over H, which is equal to 2.5 meters over 1.6 meters, and we'd get a theoretical mechanical advantage of 1.56. Again, there's no unit on this TMA. Uh, the meters are just canceling out. It's just a ratio of uh, the length of the inclined plane over the vertical height of the inclined plane. All right, next we want to find the AMA, the actual mechanical advantage of the ramp. Now, the AMA equation deals with output force divided by the input force. The only issue is uh, we don't have the input force. That's what the third part of the problem is going to ask us to solve. But we do have an inefficiency. We know that the ramp is 80% efficient, uh, is 80 efficient. So with an efficiency and with the TMA that we calculated on the previous problem, we can limit that equation to just one variable, and that one variable is AMA. So if we have an 80% efficiency, which goes in as a decimal as 0 0.80, and we have a 1.56 theoretical mechanical advantage, we can easily solve for our uh, AMA at 1.25. That's rounded a little bit, but it's 1.25 for our AMA. All right, the last issue here is what is the force needed to accomplish uh, this, and what we're looking for here is the input force. How much force are we going to have to apply to the box as we slide it up the back of the truck? Well, the input force and the output force are related through the actual mechanical advantage. The actual mechanical advantage is F over, F o over Fi. Now let's make sure we know what we have. We know that it's a 25 pound box, so the output force of the machine is going to have to be 25 pounds to overcome the weight due to gravity on the box. Now we're not going to use pounds, uh, we're going to use newtons. And so to convert 25 pounds to newtons, uh, it's roughly 4.45 uh, newtons per pound. So as we multiply that through, uh, we're going to get the output force uh, that we can use into our equation. The AMA is what we just got on the previous slide of 1.25. So our problem looks simple now. Uh, the actual mechanical advantage is 1.25. Our converted pounds to newtons output force is 111.25 newtons, and the input force is what we're solving for. Some simple math, and the input force is 89 newtons. And now we're ready for our final answer. Our final answer for each of these parts of the problem would be that the theoretical mechanical advantage of the ramp is 1.56. Because it's only 80% efficient, the actual mechanical advantage of the ramp is 1.25. And so therefore, uh, you would need 89 newtons uh, of force to slide the box up the truck. Now, uh, that makes sense because the output force, if you weren't using the ramp, as we saw in the previous slide, the output force would be 111.25 newtons without the ramp. That's much larger than the input force of only 89 newtons because uh, the ramp, though not perfect and 100% efficient, it's still efficient enough to make uh, our work a little bit easier and applying only a force of 89 newtons.